Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, dear students, uh, today we talk about uh, the spline representation, okay, uh, in computer graphics. So what is spline, uh, how to represent it and all that. Before uh, doing that, I guess we should uh, be recapping a little bit what we were doing, uh, why we are here. We were seeing, actually, uh, we were dealing with the object representation, okay. Okay, this is a very thin pen actually. Let me make it a little bolder. Okay, in object representation, uh, we were talking about how to represent object and we have uh, three. We either use it the implicit, we use it the explicit, okay, representation, or we use it uh, the one uh, important that's what you're going to use now, and that is parametric representation. So now on, we'll be talking about only the parameter representation, which talks about a parameter, a single parameter, on which the x or y or z, you know, on some parameter, which is, uh, we use it. And all of these will be calculated in terms of the Cartesian parameter, maybe, okay? And this supply and representation is uh, one of the, you know, popular boundary representation uh, techniques, what is called the supply and representation, okay? Before talking about the spline, we should talk about the curves, okay? Because whenever we see any surface, any complex object to be drawn, for example, I want to uh, draw a dome of whatever that is. It doesn't look a dome. It looks like a rakshas, right? Anyways, let me put up the eye on his on the forehead then. Okay, whatever. So if I want to do any complex object, whatever it is, so there we see the curves. So we need to understand how to actually... Uh, specify these curves, okay? And in the parameter representation, these curves can be uh, represented using a single uh, parameter, u, okay? Um, so we can represent curves uh, or what we, uh, using these Cartesian coordinates, x, y, and z, using a single parameter, that is u. And that's why it becomes very easy for us to uh, represent things using the parametric, uh, using the parametric representation, having some uh, uh, the parameter. Why this becomes so simple and easy? Because, um, you know, in a parametric representation of a curve, uh, what, why we use this U, what is the intuition behind the U is that, uh, say, for example, we are drawing a particular object on a 2D, uh, you know, Cartesian coordinates, okay? We, this is a Cartesian space where we have to draw, this is the X and this is the Y and this is the Z. And we have to draw a particular object on this 2D Cartesian uh, space, uh, basically with having the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And what we do is this U is actually denoting the time, okay? Uh, that's what, when we're drawing a particular thing on the screen, okay? At, at a particular moment of time, we put some, put some pixel, put a point on there, okay? And U is denoting that time. Okay, when we are drawing that curve on a 2D Cartesian space over that period of time. So what is at that point of time, uh, we put that uh, point and we call that as a U. Okay, so that, that is that uh, at any particular uh, instance of time, we place a Cartesian point at time U. So this is a U denotes that time. So this U so any value, so we, we could have any value of u, okay? So what does it denote? It denotes that specific instance of time uh, at which point we can determine the corresponding coordinate values using the equation. So we have an equation. So we want to find, uh, determine the what, what are the corresponding, uh, you know, coordinate values. What is the x and what is y and what is z at that particular u? So u denotes that particular instance of time when we are drawing that object on the on the 2D screen, okay? And depending upon that u, we can calculate using the equations what is the x and what is the y and, or what is the z of that particular point what, when we were drawing that. Now, if we talk of more specific about a curve, so we have any particular curve, for example, how to represent this curve, okay? So this is our question. And that too very easily and without any uh, complications and all. So user-friendly kind of thing. Uh, the user wants to draw a curve. Uh, so what are the methods which is, which is easy and which is efficient? So we need to have an easy and efficient method to draw these curves. 
So what I'm technically saying is that we want some method which is going to be um, very easy, okay? Which is going to be number one easy, which is going to be efficient, okay? And which is going to be very smooth. So we want a smooth curve to be drawn. So one of the methods which we have is draw this curve using the small line segments. We can draw it using the small line segments, okay? What about that? That we have a small line segment, second segment, third segment, fourth segment, fifth segment, and so on, and eventually draw this curve. But to draw a line segment, you need your points, okay? Number one thing we need here in this line segment approach is we need to have a small, small line segment because this curve, you know, this can move around, you know, this is moving, this is going from this way, this is going from that way. So that means I can't have a big line segment. So then I can't get that bend, okay? I need a very flexible and a very small line segment because I need those curves, I need to move it. So therefore, my line segment can't be, for example, if I take this AC remote and this is my line segment, but my curve will not fit because it's moving around like this. So it will, the, the bigger the line, it will be more, lesser the curve. So I need a very, very small line segment. So therefore, I need a very, very small line segments to denote this curve. Now this will become its drawback because if you are trying to actually draw a lot of lines, okay, not only you have to draw the lot of lines, but it the, those lines, because you have to go with very, very small lines, and but those lines also have a lot of points. So you have to figure out, uh, you have to draw all those points and it's, it's going to be a little cumbersome. So it's going to be okay, we can do it, but it's not going, go, going to be efficient. So we need some method which is going to be very easy and which is going to be very efficient. So what is the alternative? What is the alternative for this? If we have the line segments, what's in the second? That's the alternative for the line segments. Now second is, which is much easier, okay, which is going to be much easier and efficient, is to find a curve equation. So we can find a curve equation, okay? now. That's okay, that's all right, that's good if you have, but it is only good if you have the equation. But the curves are, you know, they are not uh, just a one curve. The curve can be of any, any type, and to find the equation for each and every type of, a, uh, f uh, f of the curve is really cumbersome. It's not going to be easy to find equation. And that too, you may want, for example, uh, you have a car design, okay, and you want to change this design. You want to make it a little curvy here, a little curvy there. So maybe you want to change whatever you have drawn, you want to change that. So your curves got to be flexible also. So if you have this, worked out the equation for this, this set of curves, that may not work for the other set of curves. So again, this idea of curve equation uh, is kind of a failure. Why? Because we cannot have uh, these equations for every time. So with a line segment approach, it has to have a large number of uh, points uh, to represent it as a collection of small line segment. Okay, so that's not going to be an efficient way. And if we have a second as a curve equation, that's again uh, not a possibility because we do not have curves for each and every, uh, I mean curve equations for each and every curve. So we need to find the third way out, okay? So what is the easy method to do the things? Because for example, we have this, this curve, okay? Uh, let me erase this thing. Say for example, we have a, this curve, okay? We wanna draw this curve, okay? One method was to find a small, small line segments and each and every point on those line segments and draw this curve. And that's gonna be very cumbersome. Second is to find an equation for this piece of curve and uh, put in the values for the x and y to get the exactly which pixel I have to put in. But that's again not possible. Why? Because the equation for each and every curve is not possible. So what is the third thing is that why do not, what is the problem with this is that it has a large number of points. What if, if I have a small number of points? Okay, say for example, um, I have some points, say for example, this point, and then I put up the here a point, and I put up the here where it is moving, so so that I can put up a curve between these points, okay, 
the um, I, I draw the things between these points, what are called the control points. And these control points are not many, these are not huge, they are very small. Okay, so I am using the third thing is I use what is basically the spline using the spline representation. I can uh, I can uh, use the curve using the spline representation. So you understand what is a spline now, firstly. So that what I'm doing is I'm using a control points. I'm using control points, and these control points are only few. Okay, and I'm I'm specifying these control points such that the curve passes through these control points or the curve passes near to these control points say for example this was my curve and the control point is here here so the curve is passing nearer to the control points either the curve passes exactly through the control points or the curve passes near to the control point so depending on that we have two kinds of spline representations okay so depending upon <clears throat> whether the curve is passing through these control points or not, we have two types of spline curves. One is the interpolation versus approximation. Okay. So we have a control points. So if the curve passes through all of the control points like this, so we call it an interpolation. And if the curve does not pass through all of the control points, it may pass through the few, but not many. Many are not possible, but it's nearer to the control points. That is called approximation. So in approximation, the curve, as you could see, is closer to the control points, but not moving uh, through the control points. If it moves exactly uh, through the control point, then this, this will be called as interpolation. Now, question which comes in mind is uh, how many points uh, should be there to represent a uh, polynomial, uh, I mean, this uh, curve, okay? For example, we have a curve. So how many points, uh, so in other words, what's called the degree of polynomial? What should be the degree of uh, these control points, okay? Depending upon the number of control points, how many uh, control points you are putting into there uh, will be the degree of interpolating polynomial. So this is our interpolating polynomial interpolating that we want to fit those control points using uh, in that curve okay so how many uh, control points you will have depends uh, will tell us the degree of the interpolating polynomial now question is should should we have a lesser or should we have the more if we have a lesser control points that definitely will <coughs> affect the smoothness of the curve Okay, it may not look exactly what we want to build, so we cannot have a lesser um, degree of an interpolating polynomial. Okay, say for example, if you have only two points, uh, we call it a linear. Okay, so if we have only two points, we will have a linear interpolating polynomial. Or if we have, say for example, three points, so we will have a quadratic quadratic uh, polynomial. And we can have a more, <coughs> okay, four points, five points, ten points, and so on. But they are all uh, going to be the making it very complex and not efficient. And this three points control points in a quadratic polynomial uh, is the best. It serves best, okay. So when you try to interpolate these control points in general, if you have n plus one control points, uh, we may try to fit a polynomial of degree n. <laughs> Say, for example, if we have um, n is 2, so we are working with the polynomial of degree 3 and so on. So, if it is n is, say, for example, 3, okay, we are working <coughs> for a polynomial of degree 4, okay. So, it depends upon uh, what is how many, uh, if you have an n plus 1 control points, then we are talking about degree n. That's it. And for each and every point, okay, you need to have a system of equation. So here I am having, say, for example, um, x naught equals to a0 plus a1 u0 plus a n up to a n u n. So it depends on how many points you have. And you are working with the parameters and uh, multiplying it with the x factor. This, 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 you get the axis for x of this, x of 0, which has the parameter u0, okay. And then you, you go on next, adding it with the next, um, which is the same parameter u0, 
and talking about the A1, then A up to An. So here, for each and every point, if we have the n control points, we will have n such equation. This is for x0, and similarly, we have to calculate for y0, y1, y2, y3, and up to the yn, the number of points we have. So to, to determine this whole polynomial or to draw this whole curve, we have to see n plus 1 equations. So in totality, we have to, for n number of points, we have to, if, if, if it's a 2D curve, okay, which is only the x-coordinate, y-coordinate, if, it, if it's a 3D curve, then we also have to talk about the z. But say, for example, we are having a 2D curve where we have the x and y-coordinate, and for each control point, I have two set of equations, okay, because I, I want to draw from this control point to this control point, so I need an equation. Okay, where we have these parameters like constants like a0, a1, a3, and, and we have the parameters like u0, for, and for x1 we have a u1 parameter, for x2 we have a u2 parameter, and so on, because I told you um, this u1, u0, u2 will be the, it, it's, it's kind of a time at which these uh, points are drawn on the, on the curve, okay? And x1, x2, x0, these are the constants and coefficients here, which we need to calculate, and depending upon that, we will we can see what is my x0, what is my x1, and so on. So that means I'm calculating what is my x0 of this particular point. But for this particular point, I do not need to only calculate what is x0, I also need to calculate the y0. So u0, y0. So for this one, I also need for u0, y1. So because for each and every control point, I need to calculate what is its x and what is its y, and in terms of the parameter u, which will tell me where I am drawing uh, these x and y's, okay? So, so therefore, I need, if I have an n number of control points, I have uh, two n number of equations, because uh, one set for x and one set for y. And if, for example, I am changing the shape, say the shape was like this, and I pulled it, okay? Say, for example, I pulled it and the shape becomes like this, now, if I want to calculate the shape again, and if it is flexible, if I, I am what is called as a local controllability, it's called as local controllability, at the B I B L A T T Y. The local con con controllability is that you want to change the shape a little bit. Now, if you want to change the shape, you have to recalculate all of these equations together. Number one, if the number of n is large, it becomes cumbersome to actually calculate whole bunch of equations. Number second, if you have a local controllability, that means you want to change the shape a little bit, okay, and but you have to recalculate the whole thing and it becomes very cumbersome. And to simplify this thing, we have a one more method. In the same, okay, in this control point uh, scheme, we have one more thing. Uh, to simplify local controllability. So what approach we, uh, we will use, so what, what I'm saying basically is that if I want to change the shape a little bit of a particular curve at particular uh, instant of a time, but to calculate this curve, I have to calculate all these formulas again because I'm seeing this whole curve as a one thing, okay? So we have to recalculate the whole thing. So to fix this, I may say that, hey, if this is your curve, for example, made up of these points, say, okay, so divide this curve, one second, okay, let me get a new page. So what I am saying is that if I have, say, for example, this is my curve, and these are some points, one, two, three, four, five, and six, I will not see it as a, you know, create it as a whole control points, the n number of control points, rather I will take, say, group of three, so I, we usually call them as a pieces, okay? Group of three pieces, that's three control points. I have a, this much a control point, three points. Then I may have, say for example, uh, these three points and so on. Then maybe uh, this is left out and this, this will be single. And or if, if it has other points, say for example, then maybe these three points and so on. And if there's other points also left out, say only two then, then I can use the two points here. So that means I am, having these set of equations for this piece. Now I have one piece, 
that is this one which has a three control points only then another piece then another piece then another piece and eventually i will have a curve but it will have the local controllability that if i am changing the shape here i do not have to touch all this curve rather i have to recalculate only this piece okay and here i am removing the degree i am lowering the degree because i have got a three so three pieces three control points in a single subset uh, so then this is this will be the quadratic polynomial so i was having cubic or higher degree polynomial now i am putting up as a, a cubic uh, quadratic polynomial only because i am having the degree uh, 2 here and these subsets can be then combined together to form the whole curve but if you have the <coughs> you want to change a particular uh, point if a particular point you don't have to recalculate the whole thing together to get the whole curve but you have to recalculate only this uh, subset so here now we understand what is spline so the idea of fitting a set of control points with several polynomials of lower degree so we have a lower degree polynomial here polynomial 1 polynomial 2 polynomial 3 lower degree polynomials to form a higher degree polynomial this is what is called as a spline representation and the curve which is formed by these pieces uh, with the smaller uh, degree polynomials actually it is called a spline curve or simply we call it as a spline so this is what spline actually means okay which is a flexible which is made up of control points which is actually having the subsets uh, lower degree polynomials then we can join them together to form a full higher degree polynomial or higher or the full curve okay and this is what supply is supply in, in a technical term you know what is supply is you know you have the you have the seen the kite and there you use those uh, small sticks which are very flexible they are called a spline or you may have seen uh, your mother running after your father with that broom the jado leke piche nahi pad jati hai wo garden i am saying garden broom usme jo wo sticks hoti hai jiski wo bani hoti hai same uh, kashmir mein bolte hai kanj lachun that kanj is a spline actually okay because they are very flexible you can change them you can uh, you can you can you can you can bend them as as you like okay that's why that's the spline actually so that there from that we get the name spline because these splines are very flexible you can change them because they are made up of pieces so you can recalculate the value later okay so spline is a smooth curve uh, defined mathematically using a set of constraints and they have many uses like 2d illustrations fonts 3d modeling animations and you have all these curves uh, every time you 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 have anything in the graphics you have these curves and the splines are used there the physical splines you know they are used in a car boat design you know this this is that spine which, which is that stick of a kite okay <clears throat> or your broom which you can make you know these ducks make it little you know change the shape these ducks change the shape okay uh, so that to make a you know it, it was the peri bezier who actually uh, used these splines and we say that we have a control points and these control points have the equations with them and then we draw the curve using these control points they are fever and we know they are made up of the pieces okay and depending on that we have the interpolation and approximation we already done it okay if the, if the curve goes exactly through these points or curve goes closer to these control points now uh, this is called a convex hull if you have uh, the <coughs> okay if if uh, the boundary which is formed by the set of control points for a spline uh, like this as you could see like like you have a rubber band over these control points and this will be called as a convex hull okay as you could see here it's called convex hull okay or we have here as you could see the boundary which can be seen like like a rubber band stretched over these points and this is called as a convex hull <coughs> so in totality the spline is that the stick of the broom or something where you put up some weights and just make a curve and the spline curve is actually referred to draw the curve like that okay uh, like we do uh, here so how we draw it mathematically we draw describe such curve with a piecewise cubic polynomial functions because i told you we have a three uh, you can have a three degree uh, polynomial that's why cubic polynomial uh, we have the pieces okay uh, whose first and second derivatives are continuous across the various curve sections so that you can make a continuity 
uh, with the one point with the other. Uh, in computer graphics, the spline curve refers to composite curves for, formed with these polynomial sections. We specify the continuity condition at the boundary of the pieces because they need to be continuous. That's important that if this piece, it has to be continuous with the next piece. And we can use them anywhere where we have to draw the animations and we have to draw the, you know, like aircrafts, auto, automobile bodies, cars, spacecrafts, and any surface we want to uh, create, okay? We can use the splines. So we can digitize drawing for computer storage and we can use it for the CAD applications. And then we have the interpolation and approximation splines. We have discussed them. Just uh, read about these things. And this is the application interpolation curves are used uh, to digitize drawings or to specify animation path because interpolation exactly has to pass through these points. In approximation, it, ha it can be closer. So these are used as design tool to structure object surfaces, okay? Because we need to create a surface, so no need to exactly pass through that point. Now, <clears throat> the importance of spline curve is it's flexible because you have first uh, draw those control points and draw and curve and then uh, you can actually change these control points so that uh, you know you can change the shape of the curve okay so you can uh, translate rotate or scale uh, using these control points and in a cad package we can add up the more control points so that we can you know change these shapes and play with them to manipulate uh, you know these uh, shapes more in a CAD application.